Persistent organic pollutants. How many of you guys have heard of what these are? These are compounds, okay, that are in your fat cell. And the shocking thing about these compounds that are in your fat cells, they did not come from your body. They came from the environment. They came from food you've eaten, air you've breathed. Uh, they have come from toxins in the environment, okay? And these persistent organic pollutants, POPs, are stored in your fat cells. And what happens is when you go on a diet and you start losing weight, okay, your fat cells shrink, okay? Your fat cells shrink. And at the same time, as your fat cells begin to shrink and your fat begins to burn, you begin releasing POPs, these persistent organic pollutants, into your bloodstream. These persistent organic pollutants then interact with the thyroid gland, and they have a negative impact on your metabolism because they do a number of things. What they do is they increase the removal of thyroid hormone from the body. They also decrease the production of thyroid hormone in the thyroid gland, and they also interrupt function of thyroid at the level of the cells. So these persistent organic pollutants, research has shown, and you guys are going to start reading way, way, way more of this, that these things are hugely, hugely important for metabolic compensation because of their effect on thyroid function. And here is what is shocking, shocking to me, shocking to an awful lot of people who do this work and should be shocking to you. They're starting to believe, as they look at the research from these, that this may be an even bigger factor than leptin and leptin resistance, that these persistent organic pollutants may be one of the biggest factors responsible for weight loss resistance and metabolic compensation. Persistent organic pollutants, toxins in the environment can be sequestered in fat cells, and when you try to lose weight, these are released and become hormones that are causing destruction, elimination, and disrupted function of the thyroid metabolism, okay? But it's critical that you understand this. Now, I have a big kind of pet peeve. I hate when people talk about, quote, toxins, right? Toxins, uh, this is what we mean by the term toxin. And in my mind, we should be speaking exactly what we mean when we talk about toxins because persistent organic pollutants are not mercury. Persistent organic pollutants are different. They're different than other toxins. These persistent organic pollutants are coming from leaching from plastics. They're primarily from pesticide residues. That's the biggest place that we get them, okay? So this is different than mercury. And we're not going to talk about necessarily mercury today, but that also has a negative impact on thyroid function. So persistent organic pollutants, how do we deal with these? I want you guys to follow me because this is hugely important uh, for your clients. So step one, right, we need to decrease exposure. Now, this is critical because how many of you guys are big fans of the primal movement and high fat diets and paleolithic diets? Just give me a show of hands. People who are basically like, let's stop eating all grains and let's eat lots of animal proteins and things like that. I'll admit I'm a pretty big fan of um, the primal and paleo movement myself. Here is the issue. The primal and paleo movements or low carb movements like Atkins and things like that, what they are doing is they are giving us a lot of animal products. Now here's the interesting thing about animal products. These pops, bioaccumulate. What do you guys, do you guys know what I mean by bioaccumulate? What I mean is that all the animals that are at the top of the food chain, if you spray spinach with a bunch of pesticides and then you have uh, some animal come along and eat a bunch of that spinach, those persistent organic pollutants, those pesticides are going to bioaccumulate in that animal's fat. So if you have a bunch of feed that you're feeding that animal, you're going to have way more accumulation of these persistent organic pollutants in that animal's fat than you could probably ever get from eating the actual grain that the animal's eating. 
And so when you talk about decreasing exposure, if you have someone who's dealing with thyroid issues or severe weight loss resistant resistance, and you suspect there's issues with persistent organic pollutants, one of the number one ways to get rid of them is to make sure you stop bringing them in. And this means that you really want to eat a very, very high fruit, vegetable, and I should say vegetables first, vegetable diet. You also want to make sure that the animal products you're eating are either A, low fat and or um, organic raised and even organic animals will have some of these persistent organic pollutants in them so can you see that some of these people who are bacon fanatics and just want to eat all fatty meats and things like that may not be doing themselves a service if they're dealing with dealing with persistent organic pollutants do you guys follow me what I'm saying here now for me I'm a huge fan of low carb diets for a lot of people However, once I've understood what's going on here with these persistent organic pollutants, if I can't get my client to eat organic meats and things like that, then they have to go low fat and low fat might be better anyway. OK, like low fat might be better anyway for people who are dealing with these persistent organic pollutants. OK, and that's why sometimes you'll hear us talk about low fat, not a popular thing to be talking about right now in the natural health world. But I want you to understand why. The next thing you want to think about is you have to also increase the elimination of these things. So how do you do that? How do you increase the elimination? Well, one of the things that you can do is you can eat a lot more fiber because the way these things are eliminated is they go through the liver, they're processed in the liver, and then they are dumped into the gallbladder, which then dumps bile into the digestive tract. And hopefully all of those things pass out in your feces, except that oftentimes what the body will do is reabsorb bile salts and right along with that reabsorb these toxins. And so oftentimes the body's not getting rid of these, especially if you're not eating enough fiber and things like that. Does that make sense to you guys what might be happening here? So these things are eliminated in the feces, in the urine, in your sweat, and in your breath, right? Here's how to do this. You can use sauna therapy, exercise, and fasting. What do these things do? Well, fasting will cause really fast elimination of uh, or re reduction of some of the fat cells, right? Exercise will also cause fat to be burned. Sauna therapy, therapy will speed up metabolism through heat. All of these have been shown to release these persistent organic pollutants. But that is not enough because you also want to, once these things are dumped out, you want to have fiber to bind them so they get out through the feces and probiotics to go to work on them and neutralize them. You also can use lipase inhibitors. Does anyone know what a lipase inhibitor is? Lipase is the enzyme that digests fat. And if you block fat digestion, that fat will not get absorbed and therefore you'll decrease the absorption of these persistent organic pollutants from new food that you've eaten and from the old persistent organic pollutants that are getting out of the body. There are some very nice natural lipase inhibitors. Green tea is one. Ginger is one. All teas actually are good. You also can use things like charcoal and zeolites and those kinds of things, which are, you know, sort of um, natural sort of agents that can bind these up. Now, here's a couple other ones that are probably going to be uh, used by your physician, but at least you'll know why if you get a good holistic nutrition or nutritionist or physician that knows what they're doing, they'll use cholestyramine, which is a drug that um, blocks the absorption of cholesterols and fats. They'll also use Orlistat, um, which is a weight loss drug, goes by the name of Ally or Ally, right? And that actually is not is being used. It's a lipase inhibitor. And so you can actually use that to your advantage to get rid of these pops. And Olestra, how many of you guys remember those Olestra chips? 